So I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite videos that I'm going to make. It's a, a way to manage your API endpoints from your single page application in a reusable manner, in a way that you can update in one spot, like a single source of truth for all of your data that you pass, data that you receive, and it makes it really easy to consume your API from pages within Nuxt or in individual components. So in this video, we are going to create an API wrapper for our Laravel API in Nuxt. And each endpoint will have a single source of truth. It'll be nice and easy to maintain, clean to use, and really, if you need to update it in the future, you update it in one spot and it's updated throughout the app. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is build a plugin. Nuxt has a beautiful plugin uh, architecture that allows you to extend Nuxt, use the already included packages and features from Nuxt, and make your own plugins that you can consume within your single page application. So in our case, we made a plugins roast api.js file. In this file, this is where we manage all of our different API resources and include them in a way that can be consumed throughout the application. What we did is the basic overview, and we'll go through an example of this, is each endpoint has a certain <coughs> exports a module that we can import into our plugin and give it a name so we can use throughout the app. The, each plugin allows you to add certain or de destructure pieces of Nuxt to include in your plugin. So what we want is we want Axios. Axios is a library that calls <coughs> our API. It's an HTTP library. You can do get requests, put requests, post requests, delete requests, anything that you would use for an API from the Axios library. Next we want to add the inject method. The inject method is what injects our plugin into Nuxt so we can use it within our app through in a page or a layout or a component. What we did within this plugin was create an API object. <clears throat> the API object has a mapping of all of our resources. So we have companies, cafes, brew methods, amenities, etc. These resources are the modules that we included up here. And we pass to those modules the Axios uh, library. That allows us to really dial in and create each individual endpoint within that module. So it's all structured in a beautiful way that we can consume easily. Finally, we inject the API object into our Nuxt app under the, the name API. And I'll show you how to use that in a bit. Since we created our API plugin as a Nuxt plugin, we need to register it. So we head over to our Nuxt config file and under plugins, we look in the plugins directory and the roast api.js file. This registers up the plugin on both the cl client and server side. You can see with some of the other plugins, you only want them to be on the client side of the application and not during server side rendering. With the roast API plugin, you want it to be on server side rendering and on the client side. That allows you to preload data on the server side before returning a page, which is good for SEO. And as you can see, the Roast API module is now registered within Nuxt under the plugins. So this, our API, will be injected into Nuxt and we'll be able to use it throughout our application. If we look at our plugin, we have a company's API that we import from an API directory. So we jump over to that. You can see that in this file, this is our all of the endpoints for a company. This loads all of the companies. This shows an individual company. This adds a new company, updates a new or updates an existing company, likes a company on behalf of the user, and deletes a company. Now, in here, we can manage all of our endpoints. 
So we take the Axios plugin that comes with Nux as the, inject it into this module. And from there, we can call all of the methods on Axios. The reason we use the Axios module that's included with Nux is if we jump back to our Nux config, we have all of our settings for our Axios module taken care of in here. So this is present throughout the entire application. This has our API base URL, past the credentials for Laravel Sanctum that authorize us to make these requests. It's managed in a single place and we reuse it throughout the plugin. So as you can see, we're just calling API v1 companies when we want to load a company that's because our base URL is determined based off of our environment. So on staging, it would be a staging URL. On production, it would be our production URL. And then development, it would be the development URL. Makes it really easy to manage. Each of these methods is an async await a method. That allows it to be asynchronous. That allows us to catch and return errors. Makes it nice and easy to manage if something goes wrong. And it also allows us to use this with an async data. So async data in Nuxt allows you to load data before the page is returned. And we'll give an example of that in the next step. But it's really nice to have. And it's really good for SEO. But right now, all of these are also named after their RESTful resource controllers in Laravel. So if you're unfamiliar with RESTful resource controllers, each endpoint when building a RESTful API has a specific HTTP verb such as git, post, put, patch, delete, and a name that goes along with that. So if you want to load all of the companies that would be an index of the company's resource. If you want to show an individual company and pass a slug of that company, it'd be show. You want to show an individual company. Store creates a new company. The only thing that we do here is different. We change this to form data, which allows us to upload files, such as logos and images. And update, same thing. We change this to form data. It <clears throat> allows you to update an individual company. Now, when using this in a <clears throat> component or a page, the reason we abstracted this up to a plugin is if we ever need to change any one of these endpoints, we can change it in one spot and it'll be distributed throughout the app. Say we release version two of our API, change it to version two. Now we're loading all of the new data and it's every time that we load an individual company, we will get the right piece of data from the right API endpoint. It's simple, it's straightforward. And it really cleans up your code too, because you don't have to have this chunk of code repeated over and over within your application. And we'll show you how clean it gets in the next segment. All right, so let's actually put our company's endpoint to use within our homepage. So I'm gonna bring up Roast real quick here. And you can see that we have these are the highest rated roasters with subscriptions. So these are essentially companies. So when we load our companies on the, uh, the home page, we can pass parameters to our company's API plugin, or to our API plugin, to our company's endpoint. So on load, we load companies and we set the companies as a result of our API call. So instead of including all of the API endpoints when needed into the page, we just can call this dot dollar sign API. Now when we inject through here, we inject our API, we name what it's going to be keyed as in our Nux application as API right here. So in our page, we can call this.api, and it's referencing this, the Nuxt app itself. And then we're referencing the company's endpoint, and then the in index specifically for that resource. And there we can pass parameters. So we're going to take five. So these are the five highest rated. We want subscriptions. So only companies that offer subscriptions. 
and we want them to be ordered by how many people like them. So these are the highest rated companies on Roast in order that offer subscriptions. So all of these parameters can be passed to our company's endpoint and passed as params. That allows us to be flexible. Say we wanted to add, you know, top roasted companies in Wisconsin. Well, sorry, but Methodical Coffee would probably be off the list and it'd be these four and possibly another one like Valentine Coffee out of Milwaukee. That allows, this structure allows for us to be flexible, for us to pass parameters easily. And in another video, I'll show you how to make these queries really efficient as well. But that's the simplicity of once you build your plugin and start adding your API endpoints, you can consume your API very easily and very beautifully, in my opinion, from each page component or an individual component itself by just it using the wrapper that you created. In the next segment, I'll show you how to do this with async data so you can load all of this data before your page gets returned. So as I mentioned before, if you look at the company's wrapper, it is async await for each method call. What that allows us to do is it allows us to load these companies or an individual company in this case before the page is returned to the browser. So that allows us to inject the SEO content that we need through server-side rendering on our web page into the HTML before it gets returned so Google can scrape it and we can be indexed. On a mobile app, async data works at the same as if you load the page and you have, uh, you make an API call from the client side. That's the cool part about Nuxt. If you have it in server-side rendering mode, it will work by rendering the page first. If you have it in uh, single-page app mode, it'll just make the async data calls on page load. So let's look at how we do this. In Roast, we have individual companies. So let's jump over to JVC Coffee Roasters. And they are in Madison, Wisconsin. Delicious coffee, by the way. And if you look at JVC Coffee Roasters, it we have on our company page async data that loads the company and loads all of the cafes for the company. So it's a little bit different than what we did on the home page where we have a method that loads the companies and we set a local companies variable right here. On the individual company page, we have a couple promises that need to be resolved through async data. If we look at the page source, of this page you can see that the title is JBC coffee roasters and there's actual data relating to JBC in the source code that's because we do this through async data now instead of calling the API endpoint through this API cafes we have to do it through app API companies or app API cafes. Async data accepts app as a destructured parameter so we can call our Nuxt instance through async data and load that data before the page is rendered. So that's the power also of wrapping these, these endpoints as an API or as an async await resource. We can use it in async data allowing for server-side rendering. Now, if you want to see any of this code, feel free to head over to our GitLab. We have all the code available for those who have purchased the uh, uh, full copy of the book. Or you can head over to community.serversiteup.net and scroll down to the bottom. If you bought the ultimate package, you can ask any question you want, and I would be happy to help. I think uh, making API endpoint wrappers with Nuxt is extremely useful and extremely powerful, and it really cleans up your code base as well. So let me know if you have any questions.